But if we still talk about consciousness and free will, do, do you, because you believe that consciousness, as I understand you, is an emergent phenomena from the physics, of, from the brain, does that mean that you also believe in conscious machines, that's, that it's possible in the future? Yes, I do. I do. And that is a natural consequence of this point of view that there's yeah. nothing particularly special about this gloppy gray thing inside of our heads is the supposition. Mm -hmm. And if that's the case, then if those particles are appropriately arranged in any other device, an artificial device, a computer, a futuristic computer, then yes, I do think it's in principle possible for that system to have enough of the organization such that when it processes information there's an inner world and that yeah. machine can report on that now it's virtually it's very hard i'm i was going to say virtually impossible but let me say very hard to ever test that idea because we don't even know how to test that idea among us human beings right i mean i look at you right now and i think you're a conscious being <laughs> but i don't know Right yeah. inside of your head, maybe there's nothing going on. I don't mean that in a derogatory sense. I just mean maybe the inner world that I'm experiencing is not happening inside of your head and you're just responding to the stimuli of the external world. Now, obviously, I don't, I don't think that's true based on experience and, and, and based on trying to understand other beings in the world around me, but I can't prove it. And when it comes to a machine, we'll be in the exact same circumstance if the machine yeah exhibits the kinds of behaviors that we are used to from a conscious being you know if we if we go into the park one day and there's one of these ai systems sitting on a bench you know deep in thought and looking really distraught and we speak to this ai system and the ai system says i'm really depressed about the meaning of life you know i think i think we'll, we'll, we'll come to the place where we'll say yes that that machine is really having the same experiences that we do. Yeah, I, th I think you're absolutely right. I, I thought about it myself that I, I, definitely we will create machines that can simulate consciousness well enough so we can't distinguish it, distinguish it, it, it from real consciousness. That will happen before if they develop it truly it will happen before so we will never know when it actually yeah. turns over to the next level so to speak right um, yeah i've just thought about it but, but do you do you do you consider it a threat like some people do to human humanity i think i'm fundamentally optimistic and maybe that's naive but my view is that it's not going to be an us versus them i think that's really where the terror and the fear comes from because we live in a world in which it is us versus them when it comes to human beings. So my level of optimism is certainly not borne out by the state of the world, but I can't help but think that we will get better at living in groups. We are pretty um, rough in our behaviors today, but I hope that will change. And when it comes to AI systems, I imagine it'll be more a blending as opposed to you know flesh and blood beings and then these artificial beings it'll be more of a blending so now some people would consider that a threat but it's a different kind of threat but i think that we're going to merge with these artificial systems it'll begin with memory implants or brain boosters of a variety of sorts and then at some point there really won't even be a way of distinguishing between what we used to call flesh and blood and what we used to call artificial. We'll just merge together. And that's the vision that I imagine will happen. And I consider that enormously exciting. It may spell the end of the very, the original kind of flesh and blood human being that we're used to, but I don't think that's a bad thing necessarily. It could be a new era of human awareness and human experience aided and guided and and partnering with these kinds of technological systems interesting um another field that you go into to some length is of course quantum physics and um, i have a question about that do you think that we ever will have a intuitively understandable um, description of the quantum world? Well, there's two ways of going about addressing that. One is <clears throat> the Einstein approach, Einsteinian approach, which is to imagine that our current formulation of quantum mechanics is really provisional, and that when we yeah. get a deeper understanding of quantum mechanics, 
a lot of the weird stuff that we have trouble pulling into our intuition will shed away and the new description will be much closer to the kinds of things that we have an intuition for, much closer to sort of the classical ideas that came down to us through Newton and Maxwell and Einstein himself. And I, I don't see a lot of evidence for that yet, although some very smart people are working in that direction. So that's one possibility. The other possibility is, look, you know, where does our intuition comes from? It comes from experience and it comes from evolution by natural selection, selecting for those intuitions that have allowed us over the course of thousands, tens of thousands of generations to effectively navigate the world, right? There's value in knowing that when you throw a spear, the trajectory it's going to follow, right? There's, there's adaptive value in knowing that if an avalanche is rushing toward you, you should get yourself out of the way, right? These basic intuitions about the physical world have adaptive value, and that's why they've been selected by evolution and imprinted in our brains. With enough experience of the quantum world over a great enough period of time, you can certainly imagine that human intuition will expand so that the things which human beings in the 21st century find deeply mysterious and completely counterintuitive, maybe by, I don't know, the 30th century or beyond, I don't know how long it would take, the human brain, because of a deep experience of quantum mechanics, might be able to embrace the ideas more fully. Now, where would that deep experience come from? I'm not sure. Maybe uh, quantum computers will somehow bring the phenomenon of quantum mechanics up to a scale that is more directly experienceable. Maybe some kind of virtual reality system where people spend time in the quantum world in a virtual way. Maybe if you do that for, with kids from a very young age, when by the time they get to third grade, they're like, oh yeah, the Schrodinger equation, yeah, the, the wave function, yeah, it's all, <laughs> it's all completely intuitive. You know, maybe yeah. that's a way of doing it. But, but I do think that's the only way. If, if we don't go the Einstein route, if quantum mechanics is here in its current form to stay, it will take really a change in human experience, I think, to truly yeah. grasp these ideas at a, at a visceral level.